Are you serious? Are you serious? The missiles and the mayhem and the meanness continues. Let's take a look at two very dangerous places in the world. First of all, North Korea. Stephen of Oklahoma just getting some news to me, some breaking information just now. Breaking news from the Debka file. Iranian missile experts have been seen in North Korea's rocket site. Seoul South Korea government officials are reporting that the arrival of a group of Iranian missile experts have come to North Korea to help the North Koreans with their long-range rocket launch capability. They were invited after last year's North Korea, or this year's North Korea's last rocket launch back in April of this year was a miserable flop. Remember when they did that? Fired those duds and they crashed into the sea? Well, North Korea is asking Iran to come and help them with their missile and their rocket system. This is not a good thing. We don't need Ahmadulajan and Kim Jong-un of North Korea to start teaming up this little axis of evil. We don't, we don't need this in the time we're living in now. Get a cup of coffee, if you will. But also, there's concerns that... Stephen of Oklahoma also sent me this article. This is concerns that Assad... Syria's president in battle as the uprising is now in about its 20th month. There's concerns that Assad may have passed some chemical weapons to the Hezbollah there in southern Lebanon along the border of Israel. There is a growing concern that some of the chemical weapons of Assad's regime has been pushed out of Damascus area in the last few days and were sent across the border to Hezbollah and their strongholds in the Lebanese uh, Bikwa Valley to keep them out of the rebel hands. Now, Syrian army officials who recently defected report that containers were last week removed from Syrian bases and loaded on vehicles camouflaged as commercial trucks. On the Lebanese side, the consignment is thought to have been split up and hidden at different Hezbollah bases to make them harder to attack. Israel's U.S. Ambassador, ambassador Michael Owen, or Oren, he's Israel's U.S. Ambassador Michael Oren, was asked by Fox TV interview Saturday December the 8th, 2012, if he could confirm this. He said he could not confirm, but warned that any evidence of a chemical weapons being passed from Assad's regime to extremist groups like Hezbollah would be a game changer. Or, he said, a red line for Israel. And you know, when Benjamin Netanyahu drew that red line, he meant what he said. He was speaking directly to the Iranians as it relates to their uh, nuclear capability and their continual uh, enrichment of uranium. Sometime next spring, Iran will be ready to launch at least one nuclear warhead. And Benjamin Netanyahu has drawn a red line in the sand and said, we're not going to let you get to full 90% capability of enriched uranium. Now, that's about Passover of 2013. Keep an eye on this situation, folks. You want to know where we're at in, in the end time biblical scenario? Don't look at the Mayan calendar and its 5,125 year long count. Don't look at the winter solstice, December 21st, 2012. Look at Israel. Study Jerusalem. Look at the signs and the enemies that are gathering around its borders. Now, also, Benjamin Netanyahu said, or, or Michael Oren of Israel said, we have a very clear red line about these chemical weapons passing into the wrong hands. 
Can you imagine if Hezbollah and its 70,000 rockets would get its hands on chemical weapons? What? 70,000 rockets are in Hezbollah's hands? That alone makes me very nervous. But to think that they could start putting chemical, biological warheads on the top of those rockets could be create thousands of deaths among the Israeli people. That's why Deputy Prime Minister Shalom, on the other hand, saw no indication Sunday that Syria was planning to use these chemical weapons against Israel. He refrained from going into any of the three possible perils presented by the regime in Damascus as it finds itself in a knife-edge situation. Number one, Syria's chemical weapons are deployed in at least five Air Force bases, which evidence of preparations to use them, as confirmed by the British Foreign Secretary William Haig on sun Saturday, December the 8th. Also, U.S. military sources have explained early Monday morning today, December 10th, 2012, that the nerve gas sarin is effective up to 60 days after its precursor chemicals are mixed. Placing the weaponized material in close proximity to warplanes indicates an intention within that time frame to drop poisonous gas upon, from the air. After that, the sarin must be destroyed in controlled conditions, lest its poison escapes into the environment. No one knows if the Syrians have the necessary scientific mean pow manpower to take responsibility for this process. Remember, where did Assad get this chemical, biological weapons? They were not produced in Syria. They were made in Iraq by Saddam Hussein. That was the weapons of mass destruction that George W. Bush said we have to go get, that we never could find. But we did have all kinds of reports that they were smuggled from Iraq into Syria. And now we have reports, we, we, the, it's been confirmed that they have been by who? Assad himself. President Assad said, I've got chemical weapons. I got them from Saddam Hussein, remember? And I'll use them. This is a caged animal, folks. This is a caged animal is, of course, Assad. Now, if you sift through all the smoke of what's going on and the propaganda on both sides, by the way, I turn to the Word of God. And when I read in Zechariah 14... I read where G, the, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, and the Lord said, And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherein the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Now this is what the Lord said he will do to the enemies of Jerusalem. So let me be very clear to President Assad. Let me be very clear to Mohammed Mercy of Egypt. Let me be very clear to the North Koreans? Let me be very clear to President Madulajad of Iran and his Iranian Supreme Leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini. Let me be very, very clear to the haters of Israel, including Maud Abbas of the Palestinians and the Hamas. If you come against Jerusalem, be ready for your skin, your flesh, to melt off of your body. It sounds almost like a nuclear response. Are you saved? Because this is the true apocalyptic moment. It's not the Mayan calendar. It's whether you're watching the biblical clock in Jerusalem. Time's running out. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Send me a personal message. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. 
I want to be saved in Jesus' name.